In this video, you will concentrate on the first step of the update process, which is retrieving existing data from the database and then using that data to populate the form. So let's go back to Cofusion Builder. And the first thing that we will do is taking a look at the users table. And here you will choose a user that you want to update. I suggest that you choose one of the users that you have created in the previous chapter when inserting new users in the database. In my case, I will use that user, number 19. Now that number might be different for you. It depends on what is the number that your database engine has generated for those new users. So in my case, I will use user 19, but be aware that in your case, it will probably be another number. So let's return to the profile page. And here you see that I have a comment, get user to update. So just below the comment, you know what to do, a CF query to query always the same HD street data source. And I will name that query RS user to update. Okay, what do I need to do here? I need to select information from the users table and I want to take the user ID, comma, the first name, comma, the last name. I also need the email, the password, the comment, and the instrument. I don't need the other pieces of information. And I need to take that data from the users table. And of course, adding a where clause to specify that the user ID needs to be equal to the user that you have chosen to update. So that number might be different for you. Now that the data is available to the page, let's first copy the name of the query here and then return to the form because now I will need to use that data to populate the form. And we have several different techniques for that, depending on what type of field we are talking about. So for the regular CF input field or the regular text field, what we use to populate the data is the value attribute. And I will make that value equal to some dynamic data, which is in that query. And in that case, it's going to be the first name. Let's do the same for the last name. I will use the value field and I will take some dynamic data from the same query, but that's going to be now the last name. For the email address, I can use the same technique also. So the value, it's going to be the email from the same query and same technique here for the password. So I can add the value attribute, which is a dynamic data from that query. And now I take the password and I will use the exact same field here for the password confirm. So the value is going to be from that query, the same password. Now let's save and run the page. And you see that the query is indeed performed in the database and that the data is used here to pre-populate the form. Now for the drop down list, this is a slightly different technique because this is not a regular text field. So in Confusion Builder, Let's go to that CF select and we will also add one attribute to that CF select, but it is not the value attribute in this case, it's the selected attribute. And here we can use that to tell that the selected option must be the one that corresponds to the instrument field of the query. So if I save and run the page, you see that now the instrument is pre-selected here in the CF select. And if I take a look, right click and inspect at the HTML code, you will see that one of the options tag here has the selected attribute of the HTML and Confusion has automatically add the selected attribute to the correct option tag because of that selected attribute of the CF select in Confusion Builder. All right, so now for the last field, the last field is a text area. And the text area in a form is very special because it is the only field that has an opening tag here and then a closing tag. So to specify the initial value of that type of field, I need to type the value in between the opening and closing tags. So let's 
do that and I will create in the CF text area body a CF output tag because I want to output some data and the data that I want to print out here comes also from the same query and it is the current comment that is associated with that user. So now let's take a look at it and you see that the comment is indeed pre-populated here in the text area. Now there is one more thing that I need to do because when I will change the data and submit that form, I will need a way to tell the database what is the user that I want to update. And to do that, I will need the user ID. Hopefully the user ID is part of the data that I have retrieved here from the database. Now I will add one more field in the form so that this piece of information is part of the form and is submitted with the rest of the data. To do that, I go just before the submit button, but you can go anywhere in the form and I will add another CF input tag here. Like that and I will name of course that field that's going to be the FLD user ID I will give that field a value the value will come from the same query and it's going to be the user ID and the most important thing here the type it's going to be a hidden field so that field will be part of the form will be submitted with the rest of the data when the user will click on that submit button but that form will not be present on the web page it will be hidden from the user so the user cannot see that user id and most importantly the user cannot interact with that field and therefore cannot change that user id so now let's save that page and take a last look in the form you see that all the data is indeed present here I will go to the developer tools of Google Chrome here. I will go to the network tab, submit the form as it is. And here you will see in the profile.cfm page that the form data here is indeed available to that page. So you have the name, the first name, the email and so on. You also have the user ID which comes from the hidden field and you see the instrument here which is a number and the user comment which is now a snippet of HTML code thanks to the rich text editor. So the form is now ready, it contains the initial data, the data that is currently present in the database. The user can now interact with that data, change the data and submit a new set, a new updated set of data to the database and that is what we will do in the next video. But before going to the next video, there is a small exercise that you can do on your own. You will find the step-by-step -step instructions in the PDF file whose name is now on the screen. In that exercise, you will write the server-side data validation script. Take the necessary time to perform this exercise and to get used to this procedure. And I'll see you in a couple of minutes for the next video.